Good morning. This is a typical bear bag setup. We got some cables here. This is the hooks, and that's where your food bags go. So in the morning, you got to get your food off the flag bag. That's what I call it, flag bag. But gorgeous morning. Uh, wind is blowing from the west southwest, a little warmer. So we'll see what today brings. I would like to possibly do 15 miles today. That'll get me within five miles of Klingman's Dome. Can't hardly believe it, but here we are. Back on trail, beautiful morning. Just left the shelter. Had some great folks there at the shelter. Jason is the IT guy from Nashville. Just doing a little short loop from Fontana up to probably Klingman's. Then another uh, little gal named Emma, who is from Ohio, but just trying to get out of the rat race and clear her head for a little bit. And then an older group that got dropped off at Klingsman, and they're doing just a slight loop from Klingman's down, just taking their time. Real delightful people to share a shelter with. So uh, shelter stay sometimes can be a gamble, and you always have in the back of your mind, you'll set up a tent if needed, if things in the shelter are not agreeable. But it was a great shelter stay. So the goal today is a minimum of nine miles to one of the shelters where there's water. And then if that goes well and I have lunch, if I can hit that by like one o'clock, then I'm going to push on and try to make the double spring shelter because it's just in keeping with my overall plan to get through the Smokies because rain is coming on Friday. And I'm not going to hike in the rain, even if I have to hole up in a shelter for a day. Um, Jason gave me some extra food, will allow me to do that. But I would like to, hopefully by Friday, uh, be working my way right out of the Smoky. So, unbelievable day. This little stretch between two mountains has a real different look. There's a ton of grass, which is kind of odd. We're almost up at 5,000 feet, but just a different look from the woods walking we've been doing. Great Smoky Mountains. Holy smokes. I'm a little gassed after that last climb. But I want you to see it and see why the climb was there. One big difference between the Smoky Mountains and the White Mountains is that when you get up to elevation in the Smokies, you're still seeing a lot of full-size trees, you're seeing grass, and kind of the vegetation you would expect even at lower elevations. But in New Hampshire, the weather is so severe that anytime you're above like 4,000 feet, you're in what's called the Arctic zone. 
So the trees are very stunted. There may be some spruce trees up there, but most of them are not more than eight feet tall. And then on the very tops of a 5,000 footer, you're going to see just grasses and rocks. There's, there's not going to be any large vegetation. I think that's the difference on the views between New Hampshire and the Smokies. Time for the segment, Chronicles for the Curious. When I was growing up, I always struggled with my weight. And I would say that that's true even through today. Obviously, the science behind weight loss, weight gain has changed quite a bit. The idea of growing up in Mexico with corn tortillas beans, rice, tamales, uh, all carbohydrate rich food did not work well for me. And the food is delicious, by the way. So it really wasn't until I was in my early 40s that I got a better understanding of how things work for me. And it's been a little better since then. If it's something you struggle with, I get it. It's frustrating when you watch other people that have a different metabolism uh, eat a lot and you just can't eat on that level. But that's something you may not know about me. Just made it to Derek Knob Shelter and got my water bottles out. I'm going to run down, filter some water. And I may even wash my do wash my hair. It's just really sweaty and nasty. So then I'll reassess what the mileage and the ascents are to make it to the next one, which is Siler's Bald, about uh, five and a half miles away. See if I'd have enough gas in the tank after I eat. Just had a wonderful lunch at shelter that had water. I actually washed my legs, my feet, washed my hair and my arms off, and super saturated so that I can hike the next five miles. But gorgeous day out. I've got five and a half miles to go to the Siler Bald Shelter. I'm going to close the video out for tonight, but I have about two miles to go to the shelter. As soon as I drop down into the ridge here, I'm going to be in the shade. It's going to be pretty dark, and I'll be arriving at a shelter called Siler's Bald Shelter. You never know if somebody's there. I try not to video. Often it makes them uncomfortable, but I wanted to mention that this afternoon I had lunch at a shelter called the Derek Knob Shelter, and there was a hiker there that was at the previous shelter last night. Great guy. His name is Jason. He's from Nashville, and um, just a really neat guy. And then there was a new guy there at the shelter staying there from Port Huron, of all places. Kind of neat to see a fellow Michigander. And his name is Craig. He's out doing a section hike by himself. So had great lunch with them and just had a really good visit while I was kind of trying to reassess whether or not I would move forward or stay there. Klingman's Dome is only seven miles away. So that's the task for tomorrow. If I can get up to Klingman's Dome from the shelter, it's going to be five miles. But there's six, uh, six miles down to Newfound Gap, which is the next road pickup. The first three miles are technical downs, and then it gets kind of easy from there. So that's what's on the agenda for tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following along. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for all your support and encouragement. See you tomorrow on the trail.